Hi there and welcome to Stories Home with Uncle Bill. And today's 41 of fitting the year, the road to six pack abs. Today, folks, we're going to be doing some packing and talking about addictions and more, more to the point, my addictions and uh, some of the addictions maybe that you might be going through. And this one's kind of funny because um, it's one I really don't, it, it's pretty serious to a lot of people. Um, it's gambling. Um, it costs who knows how many people everything they have. And you can be addicted to gambling in so many ways. Cards, horses, racing, any kind of racing. Um, man, I've just seen people bet on everything. Cockroaches walking. Um, who's going to be the last one to line? Uh, it's anything, you know? But we're going to talk about something different. We're not going to be talking about what we call free world gambling. We're going to be talking about prison and jailhouse gambling. Because it's different. And the consequences are just the same and is deadly. Um, but a little bit more serious in prison. Because ain't nobody, ain't nobody, you're not going to let no, I guess nobody lets you do it on the free world neither. But they're more or less likely to want to go to jail than the people that are already in jail. So, normally speaking, the majority of people in county jail don't have money at all. And uh, you have to pass the time. That's one of the things you got to learn to do. You got to pass the time. At first, uh, one of the things you'll try to do is sleep it away, depending upon how much time you got. But you'll try to sleep it away. You can't do it. You can try like hell, though, but you'll never be able to do it. Um, we're going to go to the total gym for the bay. So one of the many ways to pass the time, if they have it in there, is playing cards. And there's um, a million games. Spades is one of the more popular. Uh, Pinochle, Bridge, Rummy, Tonk. I mean, any card game. Chess, Checkers. Uh, it just depends on what they have. Some places don't allow things and some places got everything, you know. But uh, generally speaking, like, so they got games to play. People want to gamble and they ain't got no money. What do you do? So you come up with alternatives. The first thing I learned that you could gamble was your food. Your tray, your dessert, your morning, lunch, dinner, tray. The whole tray. Let's bet for trays. If you lose, I get your tray. If you win, you get my tray. And uh, ain't a whole lot of food in there. You know what I mean? And it might not be uh, the food that you like. It's probably going to be the food that you don't like for sure. Um, <laughs> that just is what it is. And uh, Get in trouble. Don't expect uh, good food. That's pretty self-explanatory. So the next, most people would rather, most people don't even count in jail. Most people don't get up for breakfast. They stay up all night. Too damn tired to eat. So you can get a breakfast tray easy if you win it. I used to get a lot of breakfast trays. Then it was uh, push-ups. A lot of push-ups, man. A lot of push-ups. Or you could do any of, you know what I mean? You could just switch out. Yeah, let's play this game for push-ups, this game for uh for for um what the trays. The next thing you will play for is ducks. Quack, 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 quack. That's what you gotta do too. You go around like, hey, let me get 10 ducks. Uh, and, and they got them on command wherever. So you you could be um you could be in the in the cafeteria line. You could be at the library. You could be at a a family event that they got going on, and the dude say, "Hey, give me my ducks." You go quack quack. I'm a duck quack quack. I'm a duck 
quack, quack. That's about humiliation. That's all it is. And when somebody owes you some push-ups, you stand right in front of it. Yeah, give me my money. Give me my money. Throw some cars down there. Talk some trash. It just is what it is. And even if you ain't that kind of person, it's funny how you just start to blend in. So the longer you stay in a place, you, it, it sucks you in. And you got to be aware of that and make sure that it doesn't get at you. But the odds are it is. And probably the... And you know, there's there's the, the if you do have money, so you pay for chips or um, honey buns, soups, coffee, uh, stuff like that. When you're coming in, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, squeeze your shoulder blades. Probably, probably the funniest thing is the roaches. And you got to get on the ground. I ain't about to get on the ground. Um, to a thousand you know what I mean imagine how to do that a thousand times with a whole bunch of uh, big ass inmates male inmates and, and you on the ground dang yeah and I say that but what you don't understand there literally might be 10 guys in that line already doing that it's a funny I mean it's really funny I'm dying. A whole string of dudes. I'm dying because they lost. Go ahead and don't pay. It'll be a fight right, I mean, right there. I've seen it too many times, especially in the cafeteria line. Because that's where they're trying to get you the most. Because that's normally where the most people congregate to, is the cafeteria. So if you're going to get somebody, you just wait till it's lunch, breakfast, lunch, or dinner time. I'm dying. I'm dying. Or quack, quack. Or uh, give me some ducks. Give me some roaches. And, and uh, you know, sometimes you just the dudes continuously all for for forty minutes. Seems like just depends how much you will. Then you got those dudes. Say you owe like twenty ducks, and <laughs> I'm just gonna give you the mentality. Say you owe, uh, owe a dude twenty dollars, uh, twenty ducks. He might go, hey, let me get three ducks right quick. You get down there, quack, 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 quack. You think it's over, so you go to leave and he's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And keep bringing you back five, six times and still got a couple ducks left. Okay, you good. And don't let it, don't, don't let it do some, uh, some ducks and, and some roaches and he wants to damn, uh, just make a mockery of you. Because he knows if it was if it was him, you do the same thing. This is part of what it is, you know what I mean? And it didn't cost nothing. It was good. Good. I switched my hands around. Man, push out the head, your chest on swole. And another uh, another one was cups of water. And I seen a couple of articles um, and in the news where there was uh, like some hazing going on in colleges where they were drinking the water. Man, if you've never had to do that, because you know you got to understand something. You might be playing cards for days in a row, especially in county jail, man. Um, so, I mean, I, me I remember a couple of times I might have drank 40, 50, 60 glasses of water. Uh, and it's it's like you feel like you're in gorge. Um, that was a lot of <laughs> That was a lot of unnecessary losing. And I think in between there, there was like push-ups and stuff. Man.
just one of those things you might not have ever thought of. So probably, probably one of the more challenging um, things you could do uh, when it was when they had cigarettes and when you could buy cigarette products and things is play chicken. And chicken simple. You put two arms together, and right in the crack of that, you put a, a cigar or a cigarette or a joint, but a, a lit smoking device with a cherry on it. And the last person to move their arm, and there'll be a lot of people watching, so there ain't gonna be no question. The last person that moved their arm is the winner. Well, I was in Johnson County Jail in Smithfield, North Carolina. And it was the only place that I ever seen anybody even wanting to play that game. And my uncles had the scars to prove that they played that game. I'm, I'm twisting. Now, as I'm going back. And because they played it, I wanted to play it. My uncles and me. So I thought it was even cool that they were doing it. And I didn't know how it would feel. But I got a very high pain tolerance. And I'm, I'm willing to bet it's higher than yours. Most of the time, too. You had to be a bad dude for me to say, no, nah, it ain't worth it. So I played and won. Easily won. Nobody even came close. Most of the time, I didn't even feel the pain. And it wasn't like it was, I wasn't getting uh, burns everywhere. It was definitely the burns. It just didn't bother me. And they would get, you got to understand something. It was tobacco smoke. And I think it was, um, no, they had marble reds. Um, so it, it, would, it would get nasty and pussy and stuff. And, um, you know, you had to make sure. I had a lot. I had a lot. Um, and you, pay, you would uh, either play for a tray or a pack of cigarettes. So I had a lot of trays and a lot of pack of cigarettes. I didn't have no money, but I won. So I had way more than I needed. Well, I had beat everybody in the pod. And so I had this white boy named Billy. But he had never come to me and challenged me, so I had to go challenge him. I said, look, man, I beat everybody in here. And you had two. I don't know why you ain't you ain't want to come up to me. So he made a bed. He made the uh, bed rich. I mean, because we had a lot of cigarettes. Uh, let's bet a car in ten packs. Want to take off? So it was a hype for a couple days. I don't even remember why it was a couple days. Because normally when you make a bet, you go right there. But uh, he was like, "Yo, you ready? You ready?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." So everybody was down. It was a two-story, it was a two-story um, block pod. We put the arms together and shit, and the way I always did it, I put my arm next to yours, and I just look away. I don't have to see what the hell is going on. I really don't even care. I'm just waiting for you to move your arm. You are not going to beat me. Don't care. So, um, I'm sitting there with the arm, and you can see the dude, he's over there, he got the damn cigarette, smoking it up. Cherry gets long as shit. He said, you ready? I said, yep. Put my arm up there and I feel the burn. And I know it's only going to be about five or six seconds. That's all I got to last. Maybe 10 seconds is the most anybody's ever really lasted with me that long. So I'm sitting there, one Mississippi, two, not worried about shit, but it's hurting. I mean, it, my arm is on fire. It's hotter than it's ever been. Three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, just in case I'm fast, eleven. Good God, what the hell? And I turned and looked, folks, and the dude had the cigarette just in my arm. Like it wasn't his arm, like. He the cigarette was in his other hand, so his arm was butted next to mine, but the cigarette wasn't on his arm at all. He literally put it out in my arm. It went out. Like he held it there so long it ate through the top layer, the skin. Um 
the you know the epidermis. A hole. There was a damn hole. A burnt hole. Literally held it so long he burnt a hole. Like a huge one. You can't hardly tell it. Uh, but you can definitely see it. It's there. I said, damn, what the hell are you doing? It caught me so off guard. Like, I didn't even know. I Like, the comprehension. There was none. What are you doing? Hold on a second. You ready for this? <laughs> and this is why I didn't get mad at all. Because he already had my cigarettes. He said, I knew I couldn't beat you, man. He said, I just want to see how tough you was. He said, you way tougher than I even thought. I said, damn. Could have did it differently, though. He said, yeah, you want these cigarettes? He said, don't be mad at me, though. I was like, no, I ain't mad. I mean, it's all about winning. Once I get to win, it's, man. I mean, if you if you left your arm there, it would have still, I still would have got burnt. I think it would be good. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was cool, because I needed to beat him. Because he's the only one I had. I ain't never had to give most of them. I like all them damn cigarettes away, really. It must have been about 50, 60 packs. It's some good old boys that were in there. When you're coming up, try to hold it for a couple seconds. Really squeezing back muscles. Expanded, started playing cribbage, uh, games I ain't never even heard of before, and they were amazing. Um, I, I always tell them, I say, I'm a table chop champ. But then it went to ping pong, and uh, man, and you go literally bet on everything. And they had, they had, um, they would have space tournament, P knuckle tournaments, and bridge tournaments, and um. Man, just and there would be a lot of people, um, a lot of good players, and, and you learn, you can pick up a lot of things just watching. I probably watch hundreds of games before I ever played one. Learn how people cheat, how they read me, the different kind of game. I probably play spades a hundred different ways. Dominoes, love dominoes. Probably the toughest lever, lesson I ever heard to learn on the street about gambling came from Uncle Tony. And I had spent the whole night at the fair, 16 hours breaking down the flying bobs and the, um, the, uh, the flying bobs and the, um, it's like the octopus. I can't think of what it's called. I was greasy as hell. I was tired. I had, I had, like, really worked, and they gave me 50 bucks. If I had known that, I'd have never volunteered. I guess it was volunteer work, but 50 bucks. It's supposed to be 102 for the thing, but they didn't believe me. I had worked on Tuesday. I said, talk to the dude, man, but I couldn't find him. So, anyway, I made 50 bucks all night. It was probably about... Probably about two, three o'clock in the morning, and I was going home. And and when I was going home, I had to pass where Uncle Tony was staying. 
and I seen the lights and a couple cars on. And uh, he sold drugs and shit, sold crack, so there's never really telling who's at his house, but it's normally a couple girls. I was uh, I was 17 at the time. So my Uncle Julio was over there, Uncle Julito. Rest in peace to both of them, my Uncle Tony too. And uh, man, it had Cindy, rest in peace to her. She had some pretty boobies, man. She showed me about eight times at night. Anyway, we was over there playing, uh, started playing poker with him and shit. Five cards, five card uh, stud. I was doing real good. I was up big and I was bluffing. I was trying to, I was learning what a bluff was. So I got dealt a hand and um, uh, my uncle Julio didn't have shit, so he folded. But I got uh, three aces and a king. No wild card. I'm, I'm high on the pig. So my uncle asked me, uh, you got a good hand? I was like, nah, nah. He said, all right, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And he pulled his cars down and went to the bathroom. So my uncle Julio said, What's he, what, what, do you, uh, what hand you got? So I showed him the hand. He said, oh, man, you should have told him the truth. I was like, why? When he comes back, he goes, nah. When he left the table, he folded. Your hand don't count no more. You got to throw it in. I said, hell no. I, I got three aces and a king. He said, you messed up, man. You don't have to learn a tough lesson. So when my uncle came back out, sure enough, he took his cards and, and my uncle, the other uncle card, and put them on the deck. And he said, give me your cards. And I was like, no, I got a good hand. He said, well, let me see. I showed him my hand. He goes, and once I got up for the table, that's it. Um, that is a good hand, though. I was like, what? And then, of course, I lost the next hand and it was everything. So I literally, all that grease and shit, barely got it off me. Went home with my head between my legs on my very first bluff ever. And, and my uncle was like, yeah, because he was up good money. He, I mean, he had, he had, it was probably about four or $500. Because I give you the money back, but I'm gonna just teach you a lesson. That was a lesson. So if you couldn't tell, I switched hands. I went in her and changed. Yeah, position of my hands. Instead of out the end. I ain't gonna lie, folks. I was mad as hell. Like on the verge of fighting, mad. <laughs> right then and probably gambling what probably ain't my thing even over 50 bucks and I got friends my man Brian Wong won uh, $22,000 at the uh, World Series of the Poker and I wouldn't be surprised if he wins one or comes in top 10 I mean dude been doing it for you he actually bought me a truck with that winnings too good guy I got a couple videos with
the bar close to your legs, straight up your thighs, get up. I would like to see the rope as it's been over. You gamble, which one would you do? Would you do the trays, the push-ups, cups of water, the ducks, the cockroaches? Would you play chicken? It's being a crazy question, man. Of my life. 55 months. Five federal prisons for 30 county jails. One charge. Say I'm missing you. I know there's quite a few people that I enjoyed their company. It's a pleasure to get to know them, experience that part of life. You know what I mean? Imagine, imagine knowing somebody for years and never spending one day in the free world with them, or never had the chance to. They're never getting out. Gambling is one of those things that it, 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 could, it could be anybody. Um, because it's just human nature to want to want to compete, to want to win, to to find the thrill in things. What bigger thrill to win money or to win? You know what I mean? Luckily, it just never got no grip. Though I like to compete, there's just always been ways that where money or failing or letting down my family or friends, gambling didn't do it. It just didn't do it. And they got, if you have a problem gambling, they got gambling hotlines and things because you just don't want to lose anything to any addiction. Hope everybody's having a good day and staying safe. If you can't hit that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. Really hope this helps, man.